All right. Hello, everybody. This is Miss Pi. I am doing a test review for the final trig test. Um, there are 20 questions in this review. I will try to go through them as fast as I can, but I will warn you now the video is probably pretty long and you're probably going to have to pause it and rewind it and look at it more than once. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first question we have is find the exact value of sine of theta um, is equal to negative 12 over 13, where your angles between 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi, they want us to find sine of 2 theta. So we they want us to find our double angle. Okay, so a couple things that you need to figure out is what quadrant is this talking about? So 3 pi over 2 is I believe in the fourth quadrant yeah so 3 pi over 2 is your negative y-axis and 2 pi is your positive x-axis so it's in that fourth quadrant and then because sine theta is equal to negative 12 over 13 we know that y is negative 12 and r is 13 now we just have to find x when we calculate that out x would equal actually it equals x squared would equal 13 squared minus 12 squared well, 13 squared minus 12 squared is 25. The square root of 25 is 5. All right, so now that we know what our x, y, and our r values are, we know that cosine theta is 5, which is your x value, divided by 13, which is your r value. Okay, now that we know that, we can go ahead and plug everything into your double angle identity for sine. So to find that, it's going to be 2 times sine theta times cosine theta. And we know that sine theta is negative 12 over 13. So there's here, this 2 comes from my identity. Sine theta is replaced with negative 12 over 13, and cosine theta is going to be replaced with 5 over 13. We plug everything into our calculator, we get 120 divided by 169, and unfortunately, I do not believe that is, you're able to reduce that if we try it. If you can reduce your, your um, ratio, go ahead and reduce them, but I believe 120 over 169 is non-reducible. Yep, it is. You cannot reduce it at all. So just leave it as negative 120 over 169. All right, next one, we are verifying on identity, and this says that sine x divided by two, or sine of 2x, so our double angle of this, would equal secant x divided by 2. Okay, so one thing that we need to be aware of is that with sine 2x, that's your double angle identity, and we can replace that with 2 times sine x times cosine x. And when we do that, and... Sorry, let me back up. Because we're verifying or proving an identity, we're only going to work with this side, and this is the answer we want to get. So down here at the very end, that should be our answer. Okay, so let's see how we get to our answer. Okay, so we're plugging that in to our denominator. We're replacing this sine of 2x with 2 times sine x times cosine x. And now we can cancel out our common factor. So we have a sine x here and we have a sine x here. And so when we cancel that out, we're left with 1 divided by cos 2 times cosine x. And then if we use our reciprocal identities, we can replace 1 over cosine with secant. But the 2 right here is still going to stay down in the denominator. So it's just going to become secant x over 2. All right, let's look at our next one, verifying the identity again. We are working with the left side, and we want our final answer to be what's on the right side. So let's look all the way down here. We have sine squared x divided by cosine 2x, and that's the answer we want to get. Okay, so now let's figure out how we got there. This one is fairly long. If you look, it takes up almost the whole page to figure it out. So first thing we're going to do is put everything in terms of sine and cosine. That should be your default setting pretty much for the most part. So in our numerator, tangent squared x becomes sine over cosine squared. And same thing in the denominator, that tangent squared x becomes sine over cosine. All right. And now we want to multiply 
everything by cosine squared x over cosine squared x. What that's going to do is it's going to get rid of my denominator here in my numerator, and it'll also get rid of my denominator here in my denominator. Okay, so when we do that, let's see what's going to happen. Our, um, oh, that's just showing you what I'm doing, sorry. Now let's see what happens. So numerator, let me do it this way. Numerator, we're just left with sine uh, squared x. And in the denominator, the 1 becomes cosine squared x because you have to multiply the 1 by that. And then minus sine squared x. And then, do, 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 because sine 2x, your double angle identity, excuse me for cosine, I said sine, I think. This is cosine 2x, your, one of your double angle identities for cosine, remember there are three options. One of them is cosine squared x minus sine squared x. So we can just take our denominator and replace it with cosine squared x, which is what we want to do because that is our final answer. And we are done. All right, let's look at number four. Again, we're verifying the identity. We have secant x minus two times cosine x equals this. So that's what we want our final answer to be. We want it to be cosine 2x divided by cosine. And let me see, I've got a negative. Do I have a negative? I do have a negative up there, so we're good. All right. So again, most likely just looking at this, put everything in terms of sine and cosine. So this secant x is going to become 1 over cosine x, and this just gets left alone. Okay, then when we are have a fraction and a whole number, we have to get a common denominator so we can put everything in uh, one fraction. And in order to get a fraction here, we have to multiply the, the negative 2 times cosine x by cosine over cosine. And we get negative 2 times cosine squared x over cosine. Then we can add that 1 there. And hopefully the numerator will look familiar, actually. Oh, I know what we're doing, sorry. Um, we want, notice the, cos, the negative is right here, right in front of the 2. It's not making the whole, right now it's not making the whole fraction negative, but we want that whole fraction to be negative because... We want our numerator to be a positive 2 times cosine squared x minus 1, and I'll tell, explain why in just a little bit. But if we factor that out, then we change. this becomes positive, this becomes negative, and that 1 goes out front of our fraction. So now in our numerator, hopefully that looks very familiar because cosine 2x, so this was one of our identities, double angle identity for cosine. This is the another one, and there's one other. I think we will see it. Um, but positive 2 times cosine squared x minus 1 is equivalent to cosine 2x, so we can replace this numerator with this, and that's our final answer. All right, uh, I do not believe I said this at the beginning of the video, but several of these problems are going to be exactly like the problems you see on your test. All right, so take good notes. All right, next one, number five, sine 2x over cosine squared x is going to be equal to tan 2 times tangent x, and that is, so that's what our final answer should be, and it is. Let's see how we get there. Um, so double angle identity here, we're starting off with that. Let's go ahead and replace that with the expanded equation, so 2 times sine x times cosine x. And then chances are we have to cancel out our common denominator um, because we have a cosine in the numerator and cosine squared in the denominator. So when we cancel that out, we get 2 times sine x over cosine x. Well, sine x over cosine x, hopefully most of you remember that if you use your quotient identity, um, tangent x is equal to sine over cosine. So this whole thing right here, the 2 stays there, but sine over cosine is replaced with tangent, and we are done with that one. Some of these problems are very easy to solve. Some are very difficult to solve. All right, number 6. Okay, so let's pretend this is a unit circle. Um, if we start here on the positive x-axis, this would be 1 pi. That would be 2 pi, and this would be 3 pi. 
So for 3 pi, we're over here at the negative x-axis. And then for 7 pi over 2, we've got 1 half, 2 halves, 3 halves, 4 halves, 5 halves, 6 halves, and 7 halves. So this is 7 pi over 2. So the, your angle that you're looking for is between 3 pi and 7 pi over 2. So theta is in the third quadrant here. Um, and then if, so I think that's what I cover in here. Let me see. Theta is in the third quadrant. So your y value is 15, is positive 15. Oh, excuse me. Actually, this should say y value is negative 15 and x value is negative 8. Hopefully, I don't have to fix that throughout the whole thing because we are in the third quadrant. Even though our tangent is both, or our values are positive here, it's because both of them are negative. All right. But if we do half of that angle, let's say our angle was like just barely past 180. Um, half of that, let's say it was 185, half of that would be 92.5, so we'd be in second quadrant. Let's say our angle was almost to 270 degrees, so let's say it was 265. Well, half, let's, do, let's do 260 instead. Half of 260 is 130, and 130 would be in the second quadrant as well. So when we are looking for our value for our half, the value of tangent at the half angle, it will be negative because our x value here is negative and our y value is positive. All right, with that being said, let's go ahead and look at the rest of the work. Hopefully, again, like I said, hopefully I use negatives for the x and y value. All right, so uh, you do have to figure out your r value here. And so you do the square root of 15 squared plus 8 squared gives you the square root of 289. If you calculate that out, you get 17. So then... Um, we can figure out what sine theta is and cosine theta, and yes, I was really good and made them both negative since we were in the third quadrant. And then now we can go ahead and do our half angle, use our half angle identity for tangent to see what the values are. Um, and I did not put the identity up here, but hopefully you have your identity notes. So we have net 1 minus our cosine theta, which is negative 8 over 17, divided by our sine theta, which is negative 15 over 17. Notice for the second step, I changed this 1 to 17 over 17, so I can have a common denominator. And a minus a negative becomes a plus, so that's how that changes there. And then when we um, combine our numerator, we get 17 plus 8 gives us 25 over 17 divided by negative 15 over 17. You're going to do the keep flip change thing. We get 25 over 17, which is our numerator. We're flipping our denominator and changing this division here to multiplication. And when we do that, you can factor out your common, common factor. So 17 and this 17 factor out. 25 and 15 can be reduced. Let me see if I actually reduced or just showed you the answer. Yeah, so we're left with 25 divided by negative 15, but we can reduce that to 5 over 3, and the negative stays there. So you should expect, because we're in the second quadrant for tangent, we would be over here somewhere. Uh, our half angle identity would be over there in second quadrant and it's tangent tangent is negative in the second quadrant all right moving on to problem seven we have one minus cosine 2x divided by tangent squared x is equal to two times cosine of x so this is and we are just verifying this identity let me go ahead and uh, uncover this pretty much most of you were already putting everything in terms of sine and cosine and when we do that, we're just dealing with tangent squared x. We're just dealing with the denominator, really, is all we're changing right now. Um, and then this one, you might kind of get stuck here and say, okay, what do I do next? And honestly, right now, the Pythagorean theorem is not going to help you, even though I told you chances are if you have a squared term, just look at the Pythagorean theorem. Right now, those aren't going to help us. 
But if you look at your double angled identities for cosine, um, you have one that has a sine squared x in it, and you have one that has a cosine squared x in it. And I do not believe I have my identities pulled up, so you'll have to look on your notes to find those identities. But what you want to do is you want to take those two identities and you want to solve for sine squared x and you want to solve for cosine squared x. So when you do that, you get uh, sine squared x is equal to 1 minus cosine 2x divided by 2 because we're solving for sine squared x. And then that's for sine. And then for cosine squared x, you get it is equal to 1 plus cosine 2x divided by 2. All right, so we're going to take our, new, our denominator. We're only working with our denominator right now. We're replacing this sine squared x with this, and we're replacing the cosine squared x with this. And that's going to look a little bit confusing, but hopefully we'll figure out that it can simplify pretty fast. So this is what our problem looks like. I mean, we've got fractions and fractions and fractions. It's just crazy, right? Well, we're going to first apply the KFC only to the denominator. And essentially what we're going to end up being able to do is get rid of these twos. Um, so the first term flip your second term and multiply instead of divide, you get rid of the twos. So this is what you're left with in the denominator. So now it's a little bit more simplified, but we've got this and now we can go ahead and multiply. We want to get rid of this denominator. So instead of doing the whole keep flip change thing, we're gonna multiply everything, both the numerator and denominator, by 1 plus cosine 2x, okay? And what that will do is get rid of our denominator here, okay? So now in the numerator, we have 1 minus cosine squared x times 1 plus cosine squared x. And then in the denominator, we just have 1 minus cosine 2x. Hopefully, some people are saying, hey, what can you do with your denominator? Um, hold on. Most of you are going to want to factor that out. I want you to hold on for a little bit because I know most of you will want to do that. But instead, I want you to take all of your double angle identity or all your cosine 2x's and replace it with 2 times cosine squared x minus 1. And here's the reason why you don't want to factor this out. I know most of you are saying, hey, you can factor that out. But you have to always remember to check and see what you have over here. So we have 2 times cosine squared x. And yes, I know some of you are probably saying, hey, there's an easier way. Um, and actually, now that I'm looking at it, yeah, you probably could have just canceled the, this here and this here, and you were left with 1 plus cosine squared x, and then you could have just replaced the cosine 2. This is not squared x. I can't believe I just said squared x. Okay. Let me back up. You're going to get rid of the numer uh, this factor here and your denominator. You're left with 1 plus cosine 2x, and then you replace the cosine 2x that's here with 2 times cosine squared x minus 1. The plus 1 and the minus 1 cancel out, and you're left with your what you want to be left with. So that's one way to do it. I think I did a hard way just because I was really tired when I was setting this up. So let me just show you the method I did. I went ahead and replaced every single cosine 2x with the whole 2 times cosine squared x minus 1. Replace all that. And it looks a little bit crazy when you combine like terms and then you get simplify it to this. Now I went ahead and cancel out the this factor with the denominator, which you could have done first. Either way, you get your final answer 2 times cosine squared x. I wish I had noticed that when I was setting this up. It would have saved me time and energy. All right, number eight. Verifying another identity. And this time, we have another double angle identity. And we have cosecant and cotangent. Um, replace your double angle identity with this. And I know some of you are saying, hey, but you have your final answers in sine cubed x. 
Um, honestly, you can try doing either one. I'm going to suggest you do it this way. But if you think you can figure out how to solve it and do the other double angle identity for cosine that includes the sine, go for it, see if it works. You probably will be able to get it to work. It might just take a little bit longer or it could be shorter. All right, so let's look at our numerator. When we replace the double angle identity for cosine uh, with this, we simplify our numerator with that. Um, next step is going to be put everything in terms of sine and cosine that's in your denominator. So cosecant becomes 1 over sine x, and our cotangent squared becomes cosine squared divided by sine squared. And then we can go ahead and simplify the denominator. And when we do that, realize, okay, so back up, let me back up. Remember how I said use cosine squared x minus 1 here instead of the uh, version of the cosine 2x that includes the sine x? The reason why is because we end up with cosine squared x here and we want to be able to get rid of it. So we want cosine squared x in the numerator. Some of you are probably already noticing that. All right, so we're going to simplify the denominator. When we multiply those two together, this is what we get in the denominator. Now we're going to do KFC. Um, and we get our numerator times the reciprocal of the denominator. And then we can cancel out our common factors. So cosine squared x divided by cosine squared x. Those will cancel out. And then we are left with 2 times sine cubed x. All right. Hopefully you guys are still breathing. Pause the video if you need to. Number 9, verifying this identity. This is what we have to work with. This is what we want to get. Chances are we're going to put everything in terms of sine or cosine. Eventually, I think that's like the next step. But double angle identity, we're replacing it with this. Um, and again, I will explain why it's because we have cosecant here, probably. Let me see. And then, yes, in our numerator, that's what we've got. Or excuse me, in our denominator, that's what we've got. We're going to simplify that further. And so we still have secant x in the numerator. Cosecant squared x is in the denominator times 2 times sine squared x. Um, I know some of you back here were saying, why are we using this sine version of the double angle identity for cosine? Um, and how do you know? Um, well, this one I told you, but if I hadn't have told you, um, hopefully you would have picked up on cosecant is reciprocal of sine. So hopefully that would have been a red flag for you. All right. Um, at this point, we are putting everything in terms of sine or cosine. So secant is going to become 1 over cosine, and um, cosecant is going to be 1 over sine squared x. Now we can simplify our denominator. Uh, the sine squares cancel out, and we're just left with 2. And I did put it over 1 because we are going to do the whole keep flip change thing. And when we do that, we get uh, 1. Oh, sorry, I totally didn't show all my work on this one. Sorry in advance. Uh, basically, your numerators are just 1 times 1. And in your denominator, you have cosine times 2. And that, I believe, is what we were looking for. Yep, 1 divided by 2 times cosine. All right. Number 10, verifying the identity, sine 2x divided by all this mess. And hopefully most of you are saying, hey, replace the sine 2x with its identity. So 2 times sine x times cosine x. This one, most of you are already shouting out, hey, you can simplify that. Um, when you do that, that's what you get. Uh, notice you're going, you can cancel out all your common factors, both your numerator and denominator like your numerator is just going to be 1. This is all gone. You're left with 1 over cotangent x. And at this point, it's really helpful to look at or remind yourself of what you are trying to get. We want to get tangent x. So hopefully that will lead you to your reciprocal identities because 1 over cotangent 
is the reciprocal of tangent x. So our final answer is just tangent x there. All right, moving right along, number 11. We have another one where we need to solve each equation for all of our answers that are between 0 and 2 pi. So this one, we might have more than one answer. And so we have this. When you have to solve the equation, you want everything on one side of the equation, and you want a 0 on the other side. Um, so let me see. Oh. I know what I did. I moved, I added sine squared theta to both sides of the equation. And, and this one, why did I move the one over? I don't know why. Maybe I'll figure it out because I put set this up. Oh, I remember. Uh, we want to, let me back up. Pretend that you re, are rewinding me. When you are solving for your equations in trig functions, you want your trig function on one side of the equation, you want everything else on the other side. All right, so now that's why we move this over here. And now we're divide, and we move the one over here. And then we have to divide by two to get our sine squared theta on the other side. And so we have sine squared theta is equal to one half. Um, go ahead, and most of you are saying square root the sine squared theta to get it all by itself. And if you do that, you have to also square root the 1 half. And hopefully you remember that anytime you square root, your answer can be both positive or negative. You do want to uh, simplify this fraction. And you get positive or negative, neg uh, positive or negative 1 over radical 2 in the denominator. We can't keep that there, so we're multiplying by this. And our final value is positive or negative square root of 2 over 2. At this point, we want to know what our angle is when sine theta is equal to negative or positive square root of 2 over 2. So this is where we pull out our exact value table. Hopefully you have that. And guys, yes, you are going to have access to the exact value table. You are also going to have access to the identities for your most of the identities for your test. Um, the one, identities that you may not have access to are your quotient reciprocal and Pythagorean identities. All right, so for your exact value, we want to know when is sine theta equal to square root of positive or negative square root of 2 over 2. You've got several of them. You're just going to go down the whole table, find all of those. And what you end up discovering is that there are four answers, and those are all the four answers, positive ones, negative, value, negative ones. All right, let's look at our next one. So each, again, all, we want all the answers from 0 to 2 pi. Here's our equation. Get all of your trig functions on one side and all your constant terms on the other side. Okay, so with this, um, hopefully you can notice that you can factor out a cotangent from both of these terms and you can factor out a cotangent from both of these terms. So that's going to be your first step, is on both sides of the equation, uh, factor out whatever you can factor out. Now on this side, you can factor out both the 3 and a cotangent. So you're left with 3 times cotangent times tangent plus 1. And then on this side, we have cotangent theta times negative root 3 plus 3. And so then, hopefully you can see that both sides, you can factor out a cotangent. You can divide both sides by cotangent theta. And what that does is it gets rid of cotangent. Okay, so we're just left with um, this. And then so, so what you see up here is what we're left with. Notice we are left with the 3 here. So we're going to divide both sides by 3. And we are left with tangent theta plus 1 is equal to all of this mess. Notice our 3 over 3 becomes 1. And then we have a plus 1 and a plus 1 on both sides. So subtract both sides by 1. And when you do that, you end up with tangent theta equaling negative root 3 over 3. Again, pull up your trig table, exact value table, go to the tangent column. You're looking for negative root 3 over 3. You've got one here and one here, and we want our radian values. So the radian values are here, and let's see, that's root three, negative root 3 over 3 is 5 pi over 3, and I know I just saw it. Oh, 
2 pi over 3. So those are our two answers. Wait, why do I have 11 pi over 6? Negative root 3 over 3. Oh, sorry. I was looking at the cosine column. Make sure you have the right column. This is cosine. This is tangent. Okay, make sure you're looking in the right column. So yes, 11 pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. Okay, be careful with those exact value tables. All right, number 13. Again, we have all this. Um, we want to move this negative 2 times cotangent squared theta to the right side. And all right, let me see, what do we do? Oh, I just moved everything to the left side and put a 0 on the right side. I know why, because you're going to have a quadratic here. All right, so you move on this one because you end up with a quadratic function and a, um, sorry, you have a squared cotangent and a regular cotangent to raise to the, raise to the 1 power. You're going to end up with a quadratic cotangent function. Anyway, move everything to the left, get a 0 on the right, combine like terms. This is what we get. Now we can go ahead and uh, factor that out. If it scares you to have trig functions here instead of just a variable, replace cotangent with x, and then put it back in once you have it factored. Okay, so we have cotangent squared minus 2 times cotangent squared plus 1. So with the plus 1 here and the negative 2 here, that tells you that both of your factors are going to have a minus 1 on both of them, and then you'll have cotangent. There you go. So that's your factor. You're going to set both factors equal to 0. However, if you notice, both factors are exactly the same. So just put one factor equal to 0, and then solve for your cotangent theta. You're going to add 1 to both sides, guys. So you get, you want to know when is cotangent theta equal to 1. Look on your trig table, make sure you're looking on the correct column, and you'll find that those are the two values when you get 1 for cotangent. All right, number 14, back to our uh, finding exact values of expression. So we're not solving this time. We just want to figure out these values. And we want the exact value instead of just a rounded number. If it was just a rounded number, we'd plug this in our calculator and be done in five seconds. Because, these, because they asked for the exact value, we've got to use our identities. And hopefully most of you realize that 5 pi over 12 and pi over 12 is not on your exact value table. But if you um, multiply both of those by 2, then you would have 5 pi over 6 and pi over 6. And you do need to know which quadrant that is. And 5 pi over 6 is in quadrant 2. But this 5 pi over 12 is actually half of that. So you are looking for values that are in quadrant 1. Because if you're in quadrant 2, if you divide that by 2, you end up being in quadrant 1. Uh, so your answer should be positive. That's a good thing to check out. Um, and then so when we do this, instead of saying you're looking for a sine of 5 pi over 12, we're going to say we're looking for a sine of 5 pi over 6 divided by 2 and cosine of pi over 6 divided by 2, which then incorporates your half angle identities and um, both sine and cosine. And you're going to do one and then the other, and then because these are multiplying together, you'll multiply the two half angles. So here's your identity for sine, half angle identity for sine. Notice I'm using my angle 5 pi over 6 because that's what's up here. And then here's my half angle for cosine. And notice on the cosine one, I'm using pi over 6 because that's right, what is right here. And I'm multiplying those two together. Um, when you have square roots that two things that are square rooted and you're multiplying them together, you can't just multiply them together. But before we do that, let's go ahead and look up what cosine of 5 pi over 6 is and plug it in. And we find out that cosine of 5 pi over 6 is negative root 3 over 2. And we also find out that cosine pi over 6 is positive root 3 over 2. Now we want to go ahead and simplify first. Let's simplify what's under the radical. 
so and in our numerator so those ones are going to become twos over two and we can simplify that um, further let me see we're multiplying da 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 da, da. Um, so really quickly notice that we have 2 over 2 here plus root 3 over 2 because we have a negative or minus a negative it becomes a plus sign here and we also have the exact same thing here well if you have exactly the same thing and you're multiplying them together notice it's square root here times the square root of exactly the same thing well that is the square root of this times the square root of this is the square root of this squared so our squares and square roots cancel each other out. So we can just ignore our rad our big radicals. We still have the root three under right there. Okay, so that's what we have there. And then I'm sure most of you are saying keep flip change, which you are correct. And what happens is your numerator the uh, is gonna stay the same. You're flipping your denominator. You're not going to simplify the 2 plus root 3. That just has to stay 2 plus root 3. But in your denominator, you have 2 times 2. So your final answer is 2 plus root 3 over 4. Um, and yes, you are going to have some weird, awkward answers like that. All right, moving on to number 15. Find the exact value of this equation. Hopefully some of you have noticed that this is a sum to product. Um, okay, so this is what the identity you're going to use and notice you have the five out there. So look at your sum to product identities and this is the formula that you're using. Um, the 19 pi over 12 is here, the pi over 12 is there, 19 pi and pi. Okay, so you're just setting it up like you need to. Go ahead and simplify what's in this parentheses here and this parentheses here and you get this over 2 and this over 2 and go ahead and simplify that further and you get 20 pi over 24 and 18 pi over 24 and 20 over 24 can reduce so can 18 over 24 um, notice that 5 times negative 2 be just became negative 10 so the 20 over 24 became 5 over 6 and the 18 over 24 became 3 pi over 4. Go ahead and look at your trig tables. Figure out what sine of 5 pi over 6 is and sine of 3 pi over 4. You get 1 half for sine of 5 pi over 6 and you get root 2 over 2 for sine of 3 pi over 4. And yeah, that's in the 3 pi over 4 is in the second quadrant, so we're good there. Um, and then multiply everything together. You see you get 10 times root 2 divided by 4. The 10 and the 2 reduce, but it is still negative. And so your final answer is negative 5 times root 2 over 2. And if you wanted to check and verify that this was correct, you could plug this into your calculator and go up here and just plug this whole thing in your calculator. As long as you're in radian mode, make sure you're in radian mode for this. You should get the right answer. All right, number 16, finding the exact value of this expression. Um, again, you've got a sum to product, so we're going to use those formulas, pull them out, um, set it up. Again, you're setting up your uh, fractions and simplifying them. Simplify over here. The biggest thing on problems 15 and 16 is make sure you have the correct format here. So look on your identities notes, make sure you're using the correct one. And then just simplify, 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 simplify as much as you possibly can. You end up with uh, looking for a sine of 7 pi over 4 times cosine of pi over 3. And you just look on your exact value tables, you get this. And then once you get that, you multiply everything together, reduce what you can, and you're left with negative root 2 over 2. And that one is such an easy answer for all this crazy work. Um, all right, next one. Again, we're looking for the exact value of the expression. And this is just looks like one just crazy formula, and you're like, what the heck I, do I need to do? Well, hopefully you realize that it's the 
sum and difference identity for tangents. So if you notice, this would be angle A, this would be angle B, angle A, angle B, and it is this exact format. So um, all of these, we went from the simple and expanded it. This one, it's the expanded crazy setup, and we're going to simplify it. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to take 16 pi over 9 for our a value, and we're going to plug it right in there for a, and 11 pi over 18, plug it right in there for b. So that's what we get. And then we're going to simplify what's in parentheses. Um, notice the 16 had to become 32 because the 9 had to be multiplied by 2 to become 18, so we could have a common denominator. Uh, 32 pi minus 11, we subtract that, we reduce it to 21 over 18, which reduces further to 7 pi over 6. And now we're going to the trig table. We're looking for a tangent of 7 pi over 6. When we look at that up, we get root 3 over 3. All right. Uh, find the exact value of this expression. All right. Can you guys figure out what identity you need? It is the sum identity for sine. And again, this is the expanded version. We are just going to take our angle A, which is 5 pi over 9, and our angle B, which is 4 pi over 9, and we're plugging it right in here. Um, so we have this. We combine our fractions. We get that. Reduces to sine of pi. And then we look on our trig table, and we get 0. And we only have two more problems, and these are pretty short problems. All right, verifying this identity, here's your sum identity for sine. We expand that out, plug in theta for our angle A, plug in 3 pi over 2 for angle B. Make sure you have the right setup, the right format. We'll refer back to your identity notes. And you are welcome for, letting me, for me letting you use your notes on the test. Um, so we have this. And then, let's see, what else do we need to do? Oh, we need to go ahead and look at our trig table, figure out what cosine of 3 pi over 2 is and sine of 3 pi over 2 and plug those in. So we get cosine of 3 pi over 2 is just 0, and then sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. So sine theta times 0 is nothing, it's just 0, and we end up with cosine or negative cosine theta right here. Over here, we have this sum identity for cosine, and we have pi over 2 for our a value, and theta for our b angle, and we have the correct setup, hopefully. And so we have this. We look on our trig table to figure out what cosine of pi over 2 is. If you don't already know, some of you already know it's equal to 0, and sine of pi over 2 is going to be 1. So we get negative 1 there, and we just get negative sine of theta. Oh my goodness, my throat hurts. That is the end of the video. Please watch it, take notes, make sure you study for the test. Yes, you can use your exact the exact value table. Yes, you can use the trig identity identities notes. The Most likely, the only ones you will not have is your quotient identities, your reciprocal identities, and your uh, Pythagorean identities. All right. Have a great weekend.